In this video, we will discuss truth tables, equivalent statements, and tautologies. In a previous video, we defined truth tables for the negation of a statement, the conjunction of two statements, and the disjunction of two statements. Each of the truth tables is shown below for review purposes. We need to be able to memorize these, or at the very least, be able to recite them when we are asked these questions. In this section, we consider methods of constructing truth tables for a statement that involves a combination of conjunctions, disjunctions, and or negations. If the given statement involves only two simple statements, we'll call them P and Q, then start with the truth table with four rows called the standard truth table form and proceed as shown in our next example. Note here that if there are only two outcomes, true or false, then for two simple statements together, there are four total scenarios we need to consider. When both statements are true, when the first statement is true but the second is false, when the first statement is false but the second statement is true, and finally, when both statements are false. Our first example, we will construct a table for the negation of not P or Q or Q. So see here, we have a combination of symbols. We have our or connective and we have our not connective, the negation. So where to begin, right? Well, if we're looking at a series or combination of these symbols, then think about the parentheses, right? Beginning inside of our parentheses. So go ahead here, if you need to, pause the video and write out part A. And we will now look to construct our truth table. I will go to the full screen. So note here, this is what we're creating our table for. And to go ahead and list our two simple statements, P and Q, whether or not they're both true, one is true, the other is false, one is false, the other is true, and then both being false. Note here that for P, we will always list our four statements as true, true, false, false. And then for Q, our second statement, we will alternate true, false, true, false, giving us the four scenarios. And so using these statements and what we saw from the previous video, right, our or connective, our and connective, and then our negation, what does it do to these following statements? Well, go ahead and draw our vertical line. And our objective here is to build our table for this statement, but we have to work in parts, right? And in this case here, you think parentheses tells us to look inside parentheses first. We have not P or Q. Well, to find the or connective, we need to be able to look at not P and look at Q. We don't have not P, right? We don't have the negation of P. We have Q, but let's first find the negation of P not p well remember not p just switches the sign of truth to false and then false to truth that is if p is true true becomes false true becomes false false becomes true false becomes true so we have not p now we can find not p or q so we'll come over here to the side and write out not p or q and now we're looking at these two columns here right here's not p here's q what does the or connective give us well, true or false is true. False or false is false. True or true is true. False or true is true. Remember that or connective is going to be true every single time, except for when they're both false. True or false is true. False or false is false. True or true is true. False or true is true. So we have this, which is this. But now we need to negate that. We need to negate what we just found. So off to the side here, that's what we're finding now is the negation of not P or Q. So we're just reading the table, right? We're just looking at the four scenarios and determining, well, what did those symbols mean for us in the previous video? If I negate true, because that's what this is telling me to do, not, not true is false, not false is true, not true is false, not true is false. So I'm on my last step here. We have now found this entire symbolic notation. That's this column here. Now we're going to connect that with Q. So we're on our last step here. We are now finding this or this. The negation of not P or Q. And I might have to move my, my screen here. Not too bad. Or Q. So it's the or connective, right? We see here that the last connective we end on is this or connective. That's our, that's our final piece. If I take this 
column here, which is this statement, and I combine it with our symbol here with Q, false or true is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. And then lastly, false or false is false. We have constructed our complete truth table for our statement here. And we see that the final column will give us our, uh, our four outcomes, our, our complete uh, truth table for the following statement. Let's see how we did here. Let's go back to our PowerPoint slide and see what they give us for here, right? Not P, false, false, true, true. That's our first step that we had to work with. Secondly, we then found the OR connective. Thirdly, we then negated that connected that we just found. We then combine that with our OR connective with Q, seeing that our last column here, true, 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 false. So as our last step, we form the disjunction. Again, that OR connective is the disjunction uh, and then place the results in the rightmost column of the table. The shaded column is the truth table for our following expression. And see here that you know we don't we can't shade our column, so to speak, so we just box it out to show this is our final uh, piece to the puzzle of constructing our truth table. Part B just asks us to take the table we found from part A uh, to find or to determine the truth value of the following statement, given that P is true and that Q is false. Well, if we look at our table to the leftmost, when P is true and Q is false, well, that is row two, right? If you look to the leftmost, when P is true and Q is false, go all the way now to the right of row two, and we see that the statement will be true. So for part B, we're looking there in the rightmost column of row two, that the statement will be true. We can construct a truth table for the following statement here. Note that we have conjunctions, disjunctions, and we have negations as well. We have not Q, we have not P. We have P, we have Q. Starting as always here, our column for P, true, true, false, false. For Q, true, false, true, false. Again, each of these four potential outcomes are the only four outcomes we have. So we have them each listed. And now here we see, well, if we have not Q and not P, it would benefit us to go ahead and create a column for those two separate negations. So we then can use them to find our conjunction, our disjunction, and then finally our remaining disjunction. So not P, true becomes false, true becomes false, false becomes true, false becomes true. For not Q, true becomes false, false becomes true, true becomes false, false becomes true. Let's see here. Next, we want to go ahead and find our conjunct. Just looking left to right, we have our set in parentheses. We have our set in parentheses. So at some point, right, we're going to find this conjunction. We're going to find this disjunction. So I'll go ahead and write them both. P and not Q. Not P or Q. Remember, for the conjunction, you're going to get more false than true. Uh, the only way you'll get a true statement is if both of the simple statements are true. Otherwise, if there's one false statement, that you're working with, then the conjunction will be false. Let's see what happens. P, not Q, so I'm using these two columns here. True, false is false. True, true is true. False, false is false. False, true is false. However, right, for the disjunction, the or statement, majority of them will be true. As long as one of them has a true in it, then the disjunction will be true. Both have to be false for the disjunction to be false not P as well as Q, we're using these two in here, right? the two in the middle. True or false, true. False or false is false. True or true is true. False or true is true. So lastly here, we wanna take these two columns and combine them using a disjunction using our or statement. And that'll be our last step. P and not Q or not P or Q. You just wanna make sure the board is accepting of it and looks to be. Take the last two, combine them with the or statement. False or true is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or true is true. 
something interesting happens here in that the final column actually happens to be all true statements, right? So I guess what, what, what would be the case of that? What does that mean? Well, we're sort of looking ahead here. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the uh, screen that I have here, right? Our truth table for the following statement. Note that our last column, column five, right, gives us all true outcomes. Well, what we're going to define momentarily is what is called a tautology. A tautology is a statement that ends in all true statements. So here, that's what we're getting, a tautology. And of course, if we're asked the question here, use the truth table to determine the truth value for when P is true and Q is false. Once again, when P is true and Q is false, we're looking at row two. And as stated before, all outcomes are true. So therefore, uh, the truth value in row two is true. Compound statements that involve exactly three simple statements require a standard truth table with eight rows as shown below. Think about why we need eight rows here. If we have three statements where each statement is either true or false, think about that, right? There are only two outcomes for three statements. Two times two times two will give us a total of eight potential outcomes for when the statement can either be true or false. And those are listed below. Note here again that in order to sort of quote unquote memorize this, keep in mind we're going to need to write this down every single time we want to create a truth table involving three statements. So we have eight rows. The way to remember it is by column. The first column denoted with statement P will be four trues followed by four falses. Our second column statement Q will alternate two true, two false, two true, two false. Our final statement, denoted R, will alternate true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. We'll write that each and every time to make sure that we are listing each of the eight distinct outcomes. Here we will look at example A, construct a truth table for the following statement. We notice that P is being used, Q is being used, and then the negation of R. So because we have three letters representing three statements, our truth table will involve the eight rows as listed. Give you a moment here to pause the video and write out our three columns or our eight rows, and then we will begin our truth table. We will go to the full screen and we are looking to construct a table for the following statement. I have P, Q, not R, Q. So because not R is not listed as one of our columns, let's go ahead and create the not R column not R. I'll try to do my best on this example, but it might get a little daunting for me, but I'll try to color code this. And to negate R, right, we're just switching true to false, false to true. So they're already alternating. These are going to alternate again, right? False, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. Right? Just by negating this column here. Now that we have that, we can find this disjunction. Likewise, we can go ahead and find this conjunction as well, create the two columns separately, and then lastly, we'll create our column using that middle conjunction. Let's go ahead and do that there. We'll write out P and Q. We'll write out not R or Q. And then lastly, we're gonna bring those together for the P and Q and not R or Q. Let's see what we can come up with. The conjunction, remember, is going to give us likely more false than true, uh, but we'll see what happens. We're using the first two columns. So first two columns here, true and true is true. True and true is true. But then true and false, true and false will give us false. False and true, false and true will give us false. False and false, false and false will give us false. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, just to make sure. The or connective will give us more true than false. We'll see what happens there. Not R, so this one here. Q, this one here. So true or false. True or false is true. True or true is true. False or false is false. All right, number three, that's, excuse me. Uh, not R, Q. True, true. False, true, 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 
false tree. Filling that one back in because the false or false is false, false or true is true. And then lastly, we're going to take these two that we just found, bring them together with the and connective. True and true is true. True and true is true. However, false and false is false. False and true is false. False and true is false. Oh, lost count. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. False and true is false. False and false. False. False and true. False. So again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have our final column here representing our uh, representing the end for our truth table here. We'll see how we did. We'll go back to the uh, PowerPoint slide and compare. And note here that in our last column, uh, we have true, true, followed by false, 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 false. So once again, uh, our negation column, our P and Q column, our not R or Q column, and then lastly, we're bringing these two together. Now, they did do it out of order than what we did. Make sure that I do have this on a full screen. Uh, they, they do uh, put it out of order just simply because they read this as left to right and felt that they didn't need to find not R until they did this one first. Didn't matter, right? So either way, you see that our, our, our final column is uh, what it should be, two truths followed by six falses. We'll look to construct a truth table for the following statement. Here we have not P and R or Q and not R. Once again, we will use our eight rows for our three simple statements. And we'll have, again, four trues, four falses for P. Alternating two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses for Q. And then alternating true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false for R. We have not P. We have not R within this statement here. So it would benefit us to go ahead and find those two columns to work with. Not P, negate this column here. This becomes false, 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 true, 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 true. Negate the R column, not R. We're alternating, so this becomes false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true. We'll find the and connective, the and connective separately, not P and R, Q and not R. We're using here not P, we're using R right next to one another. True and false, 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 true, false, true, false. For Q and not R, we're using these two columns here. True and false is false. True and true is true. False and false is false. False and true is false. True and false is false. True and true is true. False and false, false and true gives us the false and false. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lastly here, we want to bring these two columns together with the or connective. So not P and R or Q and not R. Last one here to work with, I'll use the red one. Or connective, false or false is false. False or true is true. False or false is false. False or false is false. True or false is true. False or true is true. True or false is true. False or false is false. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is our final column for our combination statement. Let's go to the big screen here and see how we compare. We have false, true. False, false. True, 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 false. Looks good there. And we can check our other columns as well. Not P and R, uh, F, 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 followed by a true, false, true, false. Our second and connective, false, true, false, 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 true, false, false. So looks good there. Again, this takes a lot of practice here. Once you get the hang of it, though, it really is just looking at things and saying, hey, I have two outcomes. Either I'm going to write a true or a false. Am I writing true because it's an and connective and they're both true? Am I writing false because it's an or connective and they're both false, right? When are they true? When are they 
false. Use a truth table that you constructed in part A to determine the truth value. Given that P is false, Q is true, and R is false, you're just going to find that within the left side, right? Find when you have a, uh, your row is FTF. Well, that's right here, right? FTF. This is row six. So we'll go over here and we'll see that the statement will be true when P is false, Q is true, and R is false. All right, we would use row six to find that the statement would, in fact, be true. If the given statement has n simple statements, then start with a standard form that has two to the n power rows. Enter the truth values for each simple statement in their negations. That is, as we mentioned earlier, if you have only two statements, well, you have four rows because two to the second power is four. If you have three statements, two to the third power gives us eight rows. If you have four statements, two to the fourth power will give us 16 rows that we would need to use for our truth table. Secondly, use the truth values for each simple statement and their negations to enter the truth values under each connective within a pair of grouping symbols, including parentheses, brackets, and braces. At this point, what we're trying to do now is shorten down our table to where we don't have to write out each of the little parts of our full statement. We will just use our leftmost part of the table, P, Q, and R, and then whatever table we're trying to construct, whatever statement is given to us, our combination statement, we will write it to the right side and just work from there. So we're not going to this time break it into little parts, we're going to put it all together and we'll see how that works out. It says, in any situation in which grouping symbols have not been used, then we use the following order of precedence agreement. First, assign truth values to negations from left to right, followed by conjunctions from left to right, followed by disjunctions, followed by conditionals, and finally, by conditionals. We will talk about those in the next video. The truth values that are entered into the column under the connective for each truth values are assigned last. Form the truth table for the, uh, the given statement. Construct a truth table for the following expression. Note here that we're only using the statements P and Q. So we only have two statements. Two to the power of two is four. So we're only going to work with our four rows. No need to use the R column because R is not referenced in this expression. So we'll go ahead and simply write out the entire expression for which we'll construct our truth column. And so think about this here, right? Where could we start first? Well, as the, uh, the previous table mentioned, right, we want to start with any of our simple statements, P or Q, or any negations. That is, if I look over here, P or, well, stop right there. P is a statement, and we know what our table looks like for P because it's already expressed. So here's what we're going to do first. We're going to go ahead and take the statements as they're listed over here, and before we even start looking at any of those disjunctions or conjunctions, we're just simply going to write out the truth values and therefore the, the false values for each of our simple statements. For P, it's true, true, false, false. And at the bottom, we're going to label that with a one to let us know that was the first step that we completed. Right, the first thing we did here, we listed out what are our true and false statement values for P. It's true, true, false, false, as the table suggests. And same over here, right? Even in parentheses, within our parentheses, we have an and connected. P and, not Q. Well, we know what P is. P is true, true, false, false. So we're going to go ahead and write that for the P that's inside parentheses. True, true, false, false. But what about our negation here, not Q? Well, if Q is true, false, true, false, not Q is false, true, false, true. So here we have our second and our third steps. What's the next thing that we can do? We still have this or connected, right? We, but what are we connecting P with, right? What is all of this over here? We haven't figured it out yet. We've only determined what P and not Q is. But what about this statement? And what about this statement? Well, to find a negation, we have to first determine what are we negating? We're negating this connective right here, this conjunction. So now we're going to find this connective here, this, this and connective. P and not Q, true and false is false. True and true is true. False and false is false. False and true is false. So our fourth step here is to find the true and false values of this and connected. Now we can negate it. We can negate what we just found. We're negating this entire statement. 
which we just found to be false, true, false, false. So this will be our next column right below our negation symbol. If I negate my last step that I just found, the opposite of false, the negation is true. True becomes false. False becomes true. False becomes true. So I just found my fifth step here, my negation. The last step we have here, right, the whole thing that pulls this together is this or connective. This is the last step here. This will be our final column that we find. The or connective for P and the previous thing that we just found, the negation of our conjunction. So we're looking at row or excuse me, column one and five. True or true is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or true is true. Our sixth and final step. The disjunction, the or connective, gives us our final tab for our truth table. Let's see how we did here. Getting into our sixth and final step, we note that all six, or excuse me, all four of our rows, all four of our statements are true statements. Once again, we're going to define momentarily that a tautology is a truth table where all of our statements are true statements. In this case here, that's exactly what we get. We will look to construct a table for not P or P and Q. I'm going to go to the big screen here. Go ahead and have my statement written to the right side. Uh, note here again that we will not write out each little chunk for our combination statement. Uh, just write the statement to the right, and we will work in columns based on where our conjunctions, disjunctions, and negations are listed. Previous problem we saw where we went ahead and wrote out P and Q as well. We do already have that listed. If you don't want to write out those steps, you don't have to, but it is encouraged. Uh, that is, if P is true, true, false, false, we'll go ahead and write not P as false, false, true, true. And although, right, P and Q are already listed over here, so if you want to go ahead and write out P as true, true, false, false, write out Q as true, false, true, false, I would encourage you to do it, but they're already nested over here together. So I feel like we can go ahead and skip to the and connective, right? P and Q, true and true is true. True and false is false. False and true is false. False and false is false, right? So we just found the and connective. We found the negation first, the and connective second. And now finally we have our or connective, right? That's going to be our, our last column, the disjunction. It's what brings everything else together. To find the or connective, you first have to find the and connective and you first have to define uh, the negation. So here, the or connective false or true is true, false or false is false, true or false is true, true or false is true. So we have our, our final column here, TFTT, -T, true, false, true, true. Let's see how we did there. And you see there the or connective is, in this case, right, they went ahead and wrote out the steps for P and Q. We skipped that, we just went ahead and found the conjunction, TFFF -F -F, as we, Note here, our not P is FFTT, and then lastly, our disjunction, our OR, TFTT. Uh, we will then move into our next terminology, and that is equivalency. Two statements are equivalent if they both have the same truth value for all possible truth values of their simple statements. In other words, right, if we create a truth table for two simple statements and whatever the combination uh, expression is, and likewise do that for another one, if they end up with the same four outcomes, then we would say that they are equivalent statements. Equivalent statements have identical truth values in the final columns of their truth tables. The notation P is equivalent to Q is used to indicate that the statements P and Q are equivalent. We have instead of the equal sign, the equal sign is uh, two parallel or are two parallel uh, lines that are horizontal. Here the equivalent sign are three horizontal parallel lines. Show that the following two statements are equivalent statements. Well, in order to do this here, what we're going to do is two separate problems, right? We're going to take the first statement and create a truth table. We will take the second statement separately, take, create a second truth table, and just determine are the four columns the same, All right? Is row one the same as row one, row two and row two, row three and row three, row four and row four. I'm going to go ahead and go to the full screen. I have a big board to work with up here. Uh, I went ahead and put the two statements on the same sort of truth table uh, just to see if the final column here 
matches the final column here. And it does say show that they are equivalent, which means that they are. So we should get the same thing. If the question was, are they equivalent, then they may be, they may not be. But when this says show it, it's saying, hey, show it. So let's see if we can do that. Negate the OR connective. Well, in order to negate something, we have to find the OR connective. In order to find the OR connective, we need to find the negation of Q. So P is true, true, false, false. Not Q is false, true, false, true. The OR of this, true or false, true. True or true is true. False or false is false. False or true is true. So again, just to see here, third column, T, T, F, T. And now to negate the OR connective, our, our final step, T becomes F, T becomes F, F becomes T, T becomes F. So there's our final column representing our truth table for that expression. So what we get over here. Not P, F, F, T, T, Q, T, F, T, F. The end of these two, F, F, T, F. F, F, T, F, 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 T, F. These are equivalent statements. And so what we could say here is these two expressions are now equivalent to one another. All right, our mathematical notation to show that this outcome or expression is exactly the same as this expression. How do we know that? We just showed that their truth tables are exactly the same. Their final column matches up show that the following expressions are equivalent, P or, P and not Q, and P. We'll go to the table here, separating the two statements. And we know that P, well, it's already written, TTFF, so we'll go ahead and write that down. We just want to know, is this truth table the same as this? Is the final column for this statement here the same as TTFF? Let's see. Well, go ahead and write these down if you want to. P is TTFF, step one. P is TTFF, step two. Not Q, the negation of Q is FTFT, step three. Inside parentheses, we have the conjunction, so we'll go there. T and F is F, T and T is T, F and F is F, F and T is and if we need to revisit that, go back to our previous video um, in uh, quantifiers and logic statements and uh, take a peek at that there. Last step here we need to look at is our fifth and final column, the OR connective, our disjunction. Taking the, final, the previous step four, as well as P over here, T or F is T, T or T is T, F or F is false, F or F is false. So once more, right, we see that these two columns are exactly the same, right? TTFF, which means that the two statements are equivalent. When the problem says show that they are equivalent, that's letting you know that they are, like that you should get the same exact outcome. But it's now just practicing the steps to get to those same two outcomes. We want to talk about two very important equivalent statements. Uh, we'll discuss the first one here that says P or Q, the negation of P or Q is equivalent to not P and not Q. This is the first statement for De Morgan's laws that we will discuss on the next slide, but we wanna go ahead and introduce this equivalent statement and, and first and foremost, go ahead and show that they actually are equivalent to one another so we can use them. Uh, lastly, the second one says the negation of our and connective, right? The negation of P and Q is equivalent to not P or not Q. It's, it's interesting, this De Morgan's Law is it's sort of like using the distributive property to distribute our negation sign through the parentheses. But notice what you have to do in order to do that. Notice to distribute the negation statement, you have to switch your connective from either a conjunction to a disjunction, that is from or to and, or excuse me, and to or, or from a disjunction to conjunction to or to and. So let's look at the first statement here, go to the full screen, 
and see, are these two statements actually equivalent to one another? That's why I have the question mark. Once I show it, I can erase the question mark and say definitively, these are equivalent. P or Q? Well, P or Q, true or true, true or false, false or true, false or false. If I negate that, well, not true is false, not true is false, not true is false, not false is true. So that's my final column here for the negation of P or Q. Well, what about not P and not Q? Well, not P, false, false, true, true. Not Q, false, true, false, true. A last step here, final column, the and connective, false and false is false. False and true is false. True and false is false. True and true is true. FFFT, FFFT. So now we've shown definitively, right, that these actually are two equivalent statements. And it turns out that when you are negating a conjunction or disjunction, it shows that you can distribute that negation. Just remember to switch the sign. In this case, switch the or statement to the and statement and give P or Q uh, their negations. This actually is going to work out as well if P is not P and you distribute a negation to a negation. Well, what's the opposite of the negation? It's just P itself. So in this case here, right, you go from P to not P. Well, if that was not P, you would go from not P to P. Interesting. So we have this one down. Now let's switch this, right? I'm going to pause, freeze frame if you need to. Now we'll go ahead and erase this. Because Now we want to see, well, what about that other one we have? What if we switch these? That is, what if I switch this and on the right to an or? And what if I switch this or on the right to an and? Are these equivalent? Well, it's already shown that it is. Let's show definitively. P and Q. TFFF. If I negate the and statements, not T is F, not F is T. Do I get this on the right side? Not P, not Q. So far? The OR connective. F or F is F. F or T is T. T or F is T. T or T is T. F, T, T, T. F, T, T, T. We have shown that these two statements are equivalent. So I go back to that previous screen it shows those two statements. These are De Morgan's laws. This is showing that we can distribute a negation over a conjunction or disjunction as long as in our final pro product we switch that conjunction to a disjunction or we switch that uh, disjunction to a conjunction. Let's think about De Morgan's law in terms of our verbal expressions here. It says use, a, uh, use one of De Morgan's laws to restate the following sentence in an equivalent form. It is not true that I graduated or I got a job. So again, it is not true. That's a negation, right? Not. So we see that negation that's introduced. But what is the negation? I graduated or I got a job. So we are negating the or connective. Think about this, what we just looked at, right? If we have an or connective, we see, we see this or that, right? It's saying I graduated or I got a job. That's P or Q. But we are negating. It is not true that I graduated or got a job. So we're putting the negation sign to the outside of our or connective. So going back to De Morgan's laws, if we are negating the or connective, when we distribute this, this is going to become not P. This is going to become not Q. But we have to switch the or connective to the and connective. So the question here is asking us, right, use one of De Morgan's laws to write the sentence in an equivalent form. And that's how we want to write it. We want to separate it into two sentences where the and connective is in the middle. So what is not P? Well, look at the sentence. I graduated is P, meaning that I did not graduate would be not P. Well, look at Q. Q is I got a job, right? It's the second sentence, or I got a job, or Q. So let Q be I got a job. So not Q is I did not get a job. So not P and not Q, we're just going to bring that together. I did not graduate and I did not get a job, right? Not too bad there. Using our De Morgan's laws to rewrite our verbalized expressions. Use one of De Morgan's laws to restate the following sentence in an equivalent form. It is not true that 
I am going to the dance and I am going to the game. So we have two statements. I am going to the dance for P. I am going to the game for Q. The and connective in the middle, so we have a conjunction. But you see that that conjunction is being negated. It is not true. So what we have here is the P and Q that is being negated. And of course, Mor the Morgan's Law says if you are negating the and connective, we're going to get here not P or not Q. These are our equivalent statements. So we're essentially just going to try to re rewrite this expression as not P or not Q. Again, if P is I am going to the dance, then not P is I am not going to the dance. If Q is I am going to the game, not Q is I am not going to the game. So here not P or not Q is I am not going to the dance or I am not going to the game. Let's see how we did here as we go to our next page. So once more at the bottom, thus an equivalent form of it is not true that I am going to the game and I am going or going to the dance and going to the game. We can say that as I am not going to the dance or I am not going to the game using the Morgan's Laws. As stated earlier in the video, a tautology is a statement that is always true. However, a self-contradiction is a statement that is always false. If your final column is all true, the statement is a tautology. If your final column is all false, then your statement is a self-contradiction. Show that the following statement is a tautology. So once again, we're going to get all truths. That's what the show part means. We need to now provide the work. P or... And so what are we connecting here? Not P or Q. Not P or Q. I'll go to the full screen here. P, true, true, false, false. The first step. Not P, false, false, true, true. Our second step. Right, just reading left to right, well, we can go ahead and take care of Q, TF, TF. That's our third step. What can we go ahead and bring together? Well, this connective can't be brought together until we do this. So inside parentheses, our or connective will be our fourth step. False or true is true. False or false is false. True or true is true. True or false is true. The last step here, column five, or connective for column one and column four. True or true is true. True or false is true. False or true is true. False or true is true. Our final, final column consists of all true statements. So our entire statement is a tautology. Now let's go back to the PowerPoint slide. And we will see that that's exactly what we get for our column five. Show that the following statement is a self-contradiction. In other words, we should see that our final column contains only false uh, value. So here we're going to erase. Rewrite this new statement here, P and, and what? Well, we are connecting that to not P and Q. We will go to the full screen now. Starting with P, true, true, false, false. As our first step. Not P, false, false, true, true. As our second step, Q. True, false, true, false. For our third step, in parentheses, the and connective, false, true is false, false, false is false, true, true is true, true, false is false. So that is our fourth column. And then our fifth and final column here for our and connective, using one and four, true and false is false, true and false is false, false and true is false, false and false is false. Our fifth and final column consists of only the false um, outcome there. That tells us that our entire statement up here, because we only get falses, this is a self-contradiction. Go back to the PowerPoint slide here and pull that up. And we, again, we see our fifth column consists of only false values. So a self-contradiction is on the right. A tautology is on the left.